Hi, my name is Larry Jordan, and welcome to this Power Up webinar on editing and trimming techniques inside Final Cut Pro 10. The reason you buy a video editing package is because you want to be able to edit your clips together in a way that tells your story powerfully, simply, and easily. And that's what editing and trimming is all about, and that is the focus of this session. The goals for today's session are to define key terms, show you how to preview and mark clips, show you how to edit clips to the timeline, show you how to edit clips as audio only or video only, then show you how to select clips, clip ranges, and add gaps. I'll show you how to trim clips and how to use the precision editor, and we'll have plenty of time at the end for questions and answers. A few definitions before we start. The primary storyline is the main track of your story. All media connects to clips in the primary storyline. Keep in mind that Final Cut Pro 10 does not use a track, so the primary storyline is where your clip goes the first time you edit a clip into the timeline. Then, to that primary storyline, we can create connected clips. Now this is a secondary audio or video clip which is attached above or below the primary storyline. A connected clip can be a piece of b-roll picture that illustrates what someone is talking about, a sound effect, a piece of music, audio and video. It, it, it's just not part of the primary storyline. So there's two ways that we can connect things. One is as a single standalone clip and the other is as a connected storyline. And these are connected clips which are linked together as a group. Connected storylines actually have more flexibility and more power than connected clips, and I'll show you how to use both in this webinar. Finally, a split edit is an edit where the audio and video edits occur at different locations in the timeline. The transition of the video from the first shot to the second, or the transition of the audio from the first shot to the second, don't occur at the same time. Split edits are especially useful in dramatic work where you want to see one thing and hear something different. The basic editing workflow is that you find the clip you want to use in the viewer, you set the in, what Apple calls the start, and the out, Apple calls it the end, of the portion that you want to edit down to the timeline. Then you edit the clip to the timeline, and you can do this using the mouse, a keyboard shortcut, or even on-screen buttons. Once your clips are in the timeline, you need to organize them. Select the ones you want, delete the ones that you don't, shuffle them around, maybe take out huge sections of them to get them in the order that you want. Then you adjust where two clips touch the edit point by trimming the clips. And because editing consists of far more than just one or two shots, you repeat this process over <laughs> and over and over again. Which is why being efficient is so important. I know projects that have got hundreds of clips in the timeline. And if you can save yourself even a few seconds per edit, that mounts up to a lot of time over the course of your entire project. So let me show you how this whole system works. This is Final Cut Pro 10. I've got the clips loaded up here in the event browser, and we're looking at shots inside the viewer, and I have three projects here. These are identical copies of the same thing. By the way, the way that you make a copy of a project is to control click on it and say duplicate project. When you duplicate it, you have the ability to just duplicate the project only. And I do this a lot when I want to make sure that I've got a project that I can go back to that has the exact same settings. So for instance, this is like my reset button. Double click the name of the project to open it to the timeline, and this consists of two clips. Clip number one, which is Dr. Vin Cerf, and clip number two. This is a, a medium wide shot, and that's a close up shot. And we're going to use this as an example of trimming a little bit later. I have up in the, on my second drive, I have four projects. I've got video shots, which I've got from NASA, images from Pond 5 smart sound music, and Dr. Surf's interview. By the way, with Dr. Surf, I had a chance to interview him in 2004, and he very graciously allows me to use his video in my training. And I tell you, finding good interview footage that's licensable is really tough, and I've been using him for a while, and I remain grateful to him and to Alcatel Lucent for allowing me to use this. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to view a clip. Well, let's look at a, a Pond 5 image. Pond 5 supplied these to me, getting all my credits for production out of the way at the top. And if I want to review a clip, you can click on it. And as you would guess, you hit the space bar, and you're able to view a clip and space bar to stop. Notice that I'm just taking the mouse, and I'm clicking on the clip that I want to review. Space bar. Yep, we're looking at you. You're looking at us. There's something pretty recursive there. And space bar to stop. 
Now, there's a new feature inside Final Cut 10 that we haven't had before called the skimmer, and I've turned it off because some people like it and some people don't. The skimmer is turned on or off from the timeline of a project by clicking this button right here. This turns skimming on. There's a keyboard shortcut, which is the letter S. S toggles skimming on and off. Now, there's two kinds of skimming. There's one skimming where you're just taking a look at the picture. I'm not holding the mouse button down. I'm simply dragging the mouse across the image, and it's automatically allowing me to see the image in high speed. I find skimming to be a very fast way of reviewing a whole lot of clips because in the past we would have to load them up into the viewer, and we'd have to then hit the space bar, load the next clip, etc., etc. This is much quicker. It's not accurate. It's designed to be a high-speed review tool, but it's nice that it's there. We can also use it down here in the timeline by skimming back and forth.